Good evening. Well, it is where I am anyway. Hey, glad to have you here. Glad to have you watching another one of my videos. Uh, first of all, I want to say I'm not an expert. I'm learning and I read on these things. I try them out and I make these videos as part of my learning process. And I really appreciate the opportunity to share it with each of you and especially get your comments, your corrections, your additions to what I have to say. So uh, please don't be afraid to comment and correct me if I need to be corrected. And the other thing I wanted to say is in my analytics on my YouTube channel, it shows that I'm 100% male viewership. Tens of thousands of views total, not one single female. I hope that that's not true. I don't think that that's true. So if any females are watching, would you please leave a comment just to let me know if it's, is it really true that this is 100% male? All right, this video is about hardware accelerated video coding and decoding on the 5.1 Mac Pro. The Xeons in these Mac Pros do not have dedicated video coding and decoding cores like most new processors do. Intel processors, for example, have had QuickSync since something like 2011, and many of the new Macs that, that are Intel Macs use that QuickSync for things like uh, FaceTime and QuickTime video and AirPlay mirroring and things like that. And um, we do have a way to accelerate, to enable hardware accelerated encoding on the Mac Pro, and that's uh, through the use of OpenCore. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'm going to take a file from this camcorder, uh, birds, watching a bird feeder, a 4K file. I'm going to encode it as an H.265 compressed file using only the CPU. We'll see how long that takes. Then we'll do it again using an RX 6800 GPU, uh, which includes hardware accelerated encoding and decoding on it and is enabled by OpenCore on the Mac Pro. We'll see how long it takes to encode the video that way. Switch the GPU out to an RX 580, which is several years older, and see what the difference in encoding speed and things like that are. Uh, then we'll go ahead and switch over and do a deep dive into the H.264 file format, the H.265 file format. Um, H.264 is also called AVC. H.265 is also called HEVC. Um, we'll talk about uh, how to use VideoProc to see whether you have hardware acceleration activated. And then we'll look at some white papers. I have a white paper from the Navi architecture for uh, AMD, and that would be the RX 580. And I have another white paper from AMD on the Navi generation. Now, the RX 6800 I'm using here is a Navi 2, so it may be somewhat improved from even the Navi, but um, I don't have a white paper for the Navi 2, so we'll look at what we have. And so that'll give you some um, insight into uh, the, the capabilities, at least as far as AMD puts them. The one part in this video I really don't know how to do is comparing quality. So I could put a clip of the, the file uh, of, of each type of encoding you know, on this video, but it would be rendered as the final output through DaVinci Resolve. It would be compressed and, and re-decoded uh, by your computer using uh, YouTube. And I doubt the videos would end up looking any different from one to another. If, if you look it up, you, hear, you get a lot of information that AMD encoders quality are, are terrible compared to NVIDIA. NVIDIA is much better. Um, but then if you increase the bit rate, this, that, the other thing. I don't know, I just used the settings that are, you know, just set up when you go into Resolve and you click Enable Hardware Acceleration if available. And I can't tell the difference. I can't look at the original video versus either of the uh, compressed videos using hardware acceleration. I can't see the difference. And this is 4K. Now, I don't have a 4K monitor. I have a 1440p monitor. Maybe that's where I'm missing the difference. Um, I honestly believe that, that professional video editors have trained themselves to be able to see uh, coding artifacts, compression artifacts in the video, and they develop these superhuman abilities to see video that looks like crap when people like me, it, it all looks the same. So whether I code it using the hardware acceleration on the AMD or whether I just do it with the CPU, it, it really all looks the same to me. So anyway, um, hope you enjoy the video. It's kind of long, like all of my videos are. 
So I've told you up front what the, what the results are. Everything except for the time difference. The time difference is, uh, it, I don't even know a word for it. It is so much faster and so much more energy efficient using the AMD hardware acceleration. Um, you'll see. Anyway, enjoy the video. Thank you. All right, I have Resolve set up here with a file from my camcorder. And uh, you see here it's this uh, C0023.mp4 file. And over here's the information about it. It's an H.264. So the camera already records in the H.264 compressed file. 29.97 frames per second. It is a 4K resolution clip. I haven't done any changes to it other than um, reduced it to about five and a half minutes. It is an H.264, so that means that I can use hardware acceleration to work with it. And I can come in here in the timeline and you see this... Uh, Happened to have it where this little hummingbird came in and visited and just kind of checked things out. And uh, you see I can work in the timeline smoothly uh, and click to another. Sometimes when you click to different parts of the video, it takes a while to catch up. But uh, this is pretty snappy and I can just go wherever and do that. So no problem editing with this file. Go to the Deliver tab. And I have it set up to uh, do, a, do a CP render. Actually, it's set up to do a hardware accelerated render. I'm just going to click that hardware acceleration off. And we'll do a CPU render as a baseline. So this will be what, uh, what it would be like if we didn't have hardware acceleration. So let's go ahead and add this to the render queue. And get the render started. So as we do that, I'm going to look in iStat menus and look at the processor here. I have a 6-core X5690 processor, which is the fastest processor that can be put in the Mac Pro. Um, obviously, I could have two of them, which would be double the cores. And you see here, that would be very helpful in this case because it is loading up the cores quite a bit. As soon as we started rendering here, you do see the, the cores going up and you see the user here being you know, 87, 78. Uh, bumping off, off of uh, 100% all told. So the, the CPU is being basically maxed out uh, with this render. And then look down here at the RX 6800. The processor showing, you know, little bobbles here down in the bottom. Uh, I think we got up to about 6% here and 2%. Uh, so the, the GPU is being used to render the video that we're seeing on the uh, DaVinci Resolve here, but it's not really being used to in code or anything. So this is an example of what it would look like for a CPU render. As far as time, how long is this going to take? Well, right now it's two hours and 20 minutes remaining. Uh, that'll continue to change. Last time I did it, it's three hours. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording. I'll let that run through and then we'll try using GPU acceleration. The render just finished and it took Three hours, 40 minutes, and 12 seconds. Uh, I mowed almost my entire lawn, uh, four acres of it, while that was rendering. And it still wasn't done when I came back. I still had to wait. So uh, now what we're going to do is go ahead and use the hardware acceleration. Leave everything the same on the setup. Just going to click the Use Hardware Acceleration If Available box. And we'll add that to the render queue. Uh, we'll rename that. And we'll call it... Uh, Birds GPU render. And I'm going to do this both with my RX 6800 and my RX 580. So I'm going to call this one 6800 since that's the GPU that's in there. And we'll go ahead and do the render. First of all, you notice right away it's skipping right through the video uh, like a hot knife through butter. And we'll look at the GPU. And remember how before the, um, I'm sorry, the CPU, before when we did this, of course, the um, CPU was bouncing off 100%. It was completely fully loaded. But now as we look at this, the CPU is really only, oh, what is it, um, 80%? It's about 20% loaded. So 20% eh, give or take. It's not really using that much CPU. And we'll go down here and look at the uh, RX 6800. The graphics processor we see here it just just kind of jumped up to about 8.3 percent i believe we were about two percent before one two percent when it was uh, 
not using the hardware acceleration. Now we're using the hardware acceleration. It's up to 8.3. Um, I think that has a lot to do with uh, the fact that it's not uh, generating a lot of frames, like displaying a lot of frames. That's why it's so low. Uh, but it is uh, jumping through there a lot quicker. So we'll go ahead and let that render out and uh, see how long that takes. And already it's done, and it took 2 minutes and 45 seconds. So this is the difference that hardware acceleration makes. 3 hours and 40 minutes without it, 2 minutes and 45 seconds with it. Um, now this could have been cut in half if I had the dual processor machine, so it would have been an hour and a half plus 20 minutes, you know, under 2 hours, I guess, if I had dual processors. You know, just no competing with the speed of hardware acceleration. Now, this is an RX 6800, which is a Navi 2 generation, which is pretty new. A lot of these Mac Pros are running RX 580s, Polaris generation GPUs, and I have one of those, so I'm going to go ahead and shut the machine down, change out the GPU, and rerun this same project on an RX 580 and see what the difference is. Now, we'll do the same thing again. We've got the RX 580 in here. I'll show you with uh, iStat menus. AMD RX 580 and this is what three generations older than the RX 6800 so we'll see how much longer it takes to complete the render than this uh, 2 minutes 45 seconds. We use this same name but we'll call it RX 580. Uh, QuickTime H265 we're using hardware acceleration 4k resolution main profile and let's add that to the render queue and render so again it's moving through the timeline here pretty quickly it's estimating five and a half minutes at this point see we did it in two minutes 45 seconds with the rx6800 let's take a look at istat menus again the cpu is not being loaded very heavily at all I think it's being loaded even less here, 87% uh, idle, so it's, uh, what, 13% loaded. It's lo being loaded even less here because the RX 580 is not rendering it as fast as the uh, RX 6800. Let's look at the uh, RX 580's processor. So it's up here to 26%, it looks like. Okay. So we'll go ahead and, uh, oh, there, there's a comparison, I guess, of what the... Uh, processor was when we were doing the um, CPU render. This would have been probably the processor during the GPU render with the RX 6800. And um, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this. This is probably programs restarting and everything when I restarted the Mac, but uh, looks like this is where we are with the uh, RX 580 render. So again, even though we can put 12 cores in here, we can go to a dual processor tray. It doesn't look like it would help. These, these cores aren't even loaded with the uh, uh, power going to the RX 580. So let's just let this render out and see how long it takes. And it's done. Completed in 5 minutes and 35 seconds. So a little more than twice as long as on the RX 6800. But either way, just much, much, much shorter than a CPU render. All right, let's talk about the video compression standards that are going to be used in this hardware uh, accelerated encoding and decoding. And we'll start with advanced video coding, or AVC, also known as H.264 or MPEG-4 Part 10. Uh, it's a video compression standard, blah, 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 by far the most commonly used format for the recording, compression, and distribution of video content used by 91% of video industry developers as of September 2019. Uh, the intent of the H.264 or AVC project was to create a standard capable of providing good video quality at substantially lower bit rates than previous standards. And then down here I wanted to point out that H.264 is perhaps best known as being the most commonly used video encoding format on Blu-ray discs. It is also widely used by streaming internet services such as videos from Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, Vimeo, YouTube, and the iTunes Store. 
And then it mentions web software such as Adobe Flash Player, or Microsoft Silverlight, and also various HDTV processes, pro, uh, HDTV broadcasts over terrestrial or cable and satellite systems. So H.264 is out there. It's out there a lot. So the industry has continued to develop uh, more effective encoding standards. And so the successor to H.264, even though H.264 is still in use, uh, there's a successor out called High Efficiency Video Coding, or HEVC, uh, also called H.265, or MPEG-H Part 2. And it was designed to be the successor of AVC. Uh, in comparison to AVC, HEVC offers 25 to 50% better data compression at the same level of video quality or substantially improved video quality at the same bit rate. I'll let you read the rest of this. A um, lot of interesting information in there, but uh, beyond the scope of this video to try to explain it, I just want to point out that H.264, also known as AVC, or H.265, also known as HEVC, are the two main video coding formats. And if you have the option to use both, why not use H.265? It gives you better compression at the same quality rate uh, compared to H.264, so it uses less disk, disk space or gives you better quality for the same disk space or bitrate if you're streaming. Now, these are highly compressed video formats, so it takes processor power to encode when you're recording the video or making the, the disk or whatever you're making, and also to decode it when you go to watch it. So it's a highly compressed video that has to be uh, decoded or decompressed in order to be displayed. And so every computer out there can use its processor to do the encoding or the decoding. However, that's not very fast. It'll load up your processor and it'll take a long time to do it. It'll do it at the best quality. That's the best quality setting you can get is to use your processor. But if you're interested in speed or, or bit rate or the lower bit rate, then uh, we have an option called hardware encoding. And so in the world of Macs, a lot of the Macs out there have Intel QuickSync video built in. So if you're on an iMac or a MacBook that has an i3 or i5 or i7, uh, and it's after sometime after January 2011, uh, it's likely to support Intel QuickSync video. And so unlike video encoding on a CPU or a general purpose GPU, QuickSync is dedicated hardware core, a dedicated hardware core on the processor die which allows for much more power efficient video processing. So here's the trial version of Video Proc Converter, which conveniently has a hardware acceleration utility in it. And now it's scanning the equipment and it'll tell us whether we have hardware acceleration on this computer. This is a 1.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5 with Intel Graphics HD 5000, that's integrated graphics and this is a 2014 MacBook Air. And so when it's done checking, we see we have H.264 acceleration, hardware decode, as well as video processing and hardware encode, but we have no HEVC on this computer. However, not all Intel processors have QuickSync, and in particular, the processors that don't have it are the Xeons that are in the 5,1 Mac Pro, the 2017 iMac Pro, or the 2019 Mac Pro. And so there's another way around that. There's another way to get hardware acceleration on those computers that don't have them on the processor, and that is using the GPU. So since, uh, I don't know, for quite a while now, AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, most of them, not all of them, but most of them, have a form of hardware accelerated video coding and decoding built into their GPUs. NVIDIA calls it NVENC or NVENC for the encode hardware and NVDEC for decode. And you can be playing a game with those GPUs, playing a, a demanding high resolution 3D graphics game, and you can encode that video, you can uh, save it to your disk or you could be streaming it at the same time and it's not going to bog down your, your GPU or your CPU 
because it has special cores on the GPU that are going to take care of that encoding. So in a 5.1 Mac Pro, we can put AMD GPUs that have hardware acceleration on board. Uh, we can also put the NVIDIAs on there. The problem is Mac OS doesn't use the NVIDIA encoding hardware at all. You can boot your Mac in Windows, and you can use that in Windows if you have that NVIDIA card, but you can't use it in Mac OS. Mac OS doesn't support it. Mac OS does support uh, the AMD version on the RX 460 and above. So RX 460 is the Polaris architecture. So Polaris and then newer, which include Vega, Navi 1, Navi 2, and so on, those uh, are supported by Mac OS. However, Apple only activates the hardware acceleration in specific computers, which are the iMac Pro and the 2019 Mac Pro. So even though we can have a 5,1 with the Xeon processor that doesn't have any video hardware acceleration, and we can put a GPU in it that's completely supported by Mac OS that does have the hardware acceleration, Mac OS still doesn't support it on that machine and you can't use it. Except we have a community that uh, thrives on figuring out things like this. So what I have on the screen here now is Mac Rumors post or a thread, I guess. Um, and this is from Martin Lowe. This uh, 9826 uh, 790 is, is actually Martin Lowe, uh, who we know well from the Mac Pro Upgrade group. And he put a post on uh, in May of 2019, and it's entitled Activate AMD Hardware Acceleration. So those of us that run Martin's Open Core package, um, most of us realize it originally was there not to be able to run unsupported versions of macOS on our machine. It was for Mojave, and it was to activate the hardware acceleration, be able to use that hardware acceleration on the AMD GPUs. So he started this post on 2019, and originally you had to uh, install these KECTs and, and do different things, and uh, it, it took somebody who really knew what they were doing to do it. Uh, but by post 1,314 here, he had uh, uh, changed over to an open core method. So I'll jump to that and explain that open core is a bootloader. It's an open source project, and it was designed for uh, to be able to run Mac OS on non-supported machines like Hackintoshes. However, we can use it on uh, real Macs that uh, we can use it to run OS's that aren't supported. And we can also use it to enable our machines to do things that Apple doesn't intend for them to do, like hardware acceleration on the GPUs. And so what Martin did here is he created an easy-to-install package. Uh, he, he based it on the 5,1 Mac Pro, so this is a specific open core package built for the 5,1 Mac Pro. And he put it here on Mac Rumors so that we can all download it, we can all use it, he gave us instructions for how to use it, and uh, it does activate the AMD hardware acceleration. It does a few, few new things, so I'll highlight uh, some of these things here that uh, you get from installing OpenCore. So let me just go down through here. All right. So for those who have RX 460 or newer AMD GPU, so it's only AMD GPUs, and it's the RX 460, which is Polaris or newer, uh, it'll give you a boot screen. So if you have... Uh, a standard PC graphics card that's not designed for Mac OS and doesn't have the boot screen in it. Um, if you're running open core, you get that back. Uh, it gives you firmware protection to run Windows in EFI mode without risking the classic Mac Pro's boot ROM. Uh, if you don't have open core running, you should not run Windows in EFI mode because it can write to your boot ROM and corrupt it. Uh, it gives you HWXL in uh, H.264 or HEVC, and that's what we're talking about here in Mojave and newer Mac OS. Gives you the ability to watch streaming content. It gives you the boot picker. So if you have multiple OSs, like you have Windows and you have maybe Mac OS Mojave and maybe Mac OS Monterey, uh, you can pick which one you want to boot into as you start up. I do that myself. I have a Windows EFI installation and I have a uh, Monterey installation, and I have a spare um, Mojave in installation. If I ever want to run 32-bit old software, I can throw my uh, <clears throat> uh, 
I can throw my um, Mojave drive in there and use the boot picker to select that on startup and, and boot in that. And some other things in here uh, that, are, that are useful. Here he talks about the ability to run newer versions of Mac OS. Uh, Catalina, Big Sur, and Monterey are not supported by Apple on these machines. But with uh, this open core, we can, uh, we can run those. And so on and so forth. So uh, this gives us the ability to use AMD hardware acceleration. Um, let me get to some details on what these AMD cards include. And I uh, have some windows on that to open. Okay, these are two white papers that I've pulled up, and I'll go ahead and go to the top here so you can see what these are. On the left is the Radeon Polaris architecture. So Polaris architecture is the RX 460, 470, 480, 560, 570, and 580 architecture. And um, on the right is the RDNA. So that's the Navi architecture. That's going to be the RX 50, 600 XT, 50... 700, 5700 XT. I think it includes the 5500, maybe 5500 XT. Um, there was Vega in between these, so these are a couple generations apart here. And uh, let me find the description of uh, what this architecture supports for hardware accelerated coding. Okay, so here we have the, Pol the Polaris architecture includes the latest generation of AMD's video encode and decode acceleration engines. Uh, handles HEV, the, so this is the decode accelerator. So this is when you're watching the video, not when you're making the video. And it handles HEVC or H.265 main 10 profile with 3840 by 2160 resolution at up to 60 hertz. That is uh, 4K resolution, what we commonly call 4K. Um, and it includes support for the VP9 codec at up to 4K, uh, which dovetails with YouTube. I'm not sure if macOS uses that or not. I just don't know if that's supported by macOS or not, the VP9. But the card, the card supports it. Obviously, if you're running your Mac with Windows, uh, you can make use of that. On the encode side, H.264 Acceleration is carried forward from previous gen products. So you get uh, 1080p at 120, 1440p at 60 frames per second, or 2160p at 30 frames per second. And then when we go down to HEVC, notice um, the architecture has been updated to include H.265 encode acceleration at, and this is interesting, 1080p at 240. So whereas um, H.264, we only get 120 frames per second, uh, we get double that on H.265. So another reason uh, to use H.265 if you're using this generation, you'll get double the encoding rate. And the same is true at 1440 and, and 2160 or 4K rates. Uh, these rates are double what the encode rates are using H.264. So H.265 gives you double the encode acceleration, and a smaller file for the same quality. All right, so let's compare that with two generations later, this RDNA architecture, the RX 5700-ish uh, cards. So I'll find that table here, and we'll compare them. Okay, starting here, Radeon Multimedia and Display Engines. Uh, the Navi GPU family also includes extremely efficient specialized processing engines for video decoding, encoding, and display. And uh, it says it here in text, but they also give us a nice little table. So encoding, for example, 1080p, we're up to 360 frames per second now in H.264. Remember over here at 1080p, we were only at 120. So we've tripled the H.264 encode rate from the Polaris generation to the Navi generation. Um, they don't mention 1440p over here, but uh, they do talk about uh, 4K. And 4K now, whether, and by the way, the uh, frame rates are the same using H.264 or HEVC now in the Navi generation, but uh, we're up to 90 frames per second um, encode on, on 4K over here. And remember, H.265 
2160, we were at 60 frames per second. So we've gone from 60 frames per second to 90 frames per second. And that won't highlight while I'm talking about it, but it's right there. And so we've uh, increased the speed by 50%, generation to generation. H.264, of course, is updated a lot more because H.264 in code over here was 30 frames per second, 2160p30. And now it's uh, 2160p is at 90 frames per second. And, of course, it, it decodes faster. Um, I, I'm sure that's important for something to me when I'm decoding. That's primarily when I'm watching something. So as long as it keeps up and doesn't, uh, you know, give me drops or, or stutters or something, then I don't care what the speed is. And any of these GPUs will, will make for smooth playback. So... Um, I don't know. I think the encode is probably more important to us than the decode. But yeah, so uh, that's an overview of the compression standards that are that are used by this and the differences from Polaris to the Navi architectures.